Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. Let's talk about some new makeup releases. I have kind of taken myself off of Instagram for a while. Like I will post on my own account, but I am trying so hard to not go and scroll through the feed. Here's why. I knew that I had a couple of large purchases planned for this summer when I heard that Lisa Eldridge was releasing new lipsticks. I was like, <gasps> buying, done, sold. And then I knew the Sydney Grace Christmas in July sale was coming, so my beauty budget has kind of been eaten up by those two larger purchases. I made during the Sydney Grace Christmas and July sale, and I got eight of Lisa's 10 new lipsticks. So I knew that if I was on Instagram scrolling through the new stuff, I would be purchasing stuff and it would be over budget for me. So I said, okay, just stop. But now we're on a whole new month and there's a whole bunch of new stuff out there and I want to know what there is. Let's talk about it. Okay, so I am just gonna use my phone. I pulled up Trend Mood 1. I will link it in the description box down below, but it's kind of like the place where I go to see what's new. It's not the only source for makeup releases, but it's kind of like my default. All right, if you have another account that you like to follow that has excellent info on upcoming releases, please let me know. The other thing I wanna tell you is, I'm not gonna be talking about everything. There's a ton of stuff here on this account, and a lot of it is not interesting to me. It's like, I could just keep like scroll, scroll, scroll. I only wanna talk about the stuff that makes me like stop and go like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, the stuff that either makes my heart go pitter pat or the stuff that makes me go like, who said we needed this, okay? All right, that's where we're gonna start. Oh, the first thing I see, I know this shape, Byredo has a new lip product. And I was like, what? Okay, so it's a flavored lip balm. It's limited edition and oh, it's $50. Oh my goodness. So they have three pastel metallic shades. They have their signature curvilinear case. Of course, it just looks so pretty. It's the packaging that pulls me in. And I love a good lip balm more than anybody else. I love a lip product with my whole, whole heart. But then $50 for an un- tinted lip balm i'm getting itchy just thinking about it okay oh so they have a moroccan mint flavor they have a lime and bergamot flavor they have a chamomile and bergamot flavor but they're fifty dollars and it says that they are smooth gliding and genderless transparent semi-matte finish and it comes in their signature curvilinear metal case okay great fine the packaging is stunning, beautiful, would love to have it just to look at it, but I am not <laughs> spending $50 on a lip balm. Okay, let's keep going. I've been scrolling for a minute, and the next thing that I see that kind of caught my attention was like, oh, that's so pretty. There is a new Gucci collection. They have their gorgeous Flora eyeshadow palette, has 12 satin, metallic, and matte shades from blue to pink to neutral, but it's $160. All right, the first time I saw a palette like this from Gucci, wasn't it black with a floral motif on the front? I love it, the packaging is 10 out of 10. It's absolutely stunning. But the minute we start getting like above a certain price point for eyeshadow, I really start questioning, you know, priorities. You, nobody needs a $160 eyeshadow, that's not a need. But when thinking about where I wanna spend my beauty budget, I don't wanna spend that much of it on one eyeshadow palette. And then looking at the colors inside the palette, there are three blues in there. And the three blues that there are, I guess one's kind of like more like an aqua. Okay, but a pale blue, a royal blue, and what looks like kind of like an aquamarine color. I don't wear those shades on my eyes. I love the taupes, the neutrals, kind of those mushroomy shades, those are beautiful. Everything else I would wear, but if there is one quarter of the palette I know I wouldn't touch, there's no way I'm spending $160 on it, no matter how gorgeous the packaging is. I think, if I also remember correctly, a lot of other people were criticizing the formula in the previous one, so I would be interested to see reviews for this. The color story doesn't speak to me, although the packaging is just, name from afar. 
It's beautiful. Now the lipstick. <laughs> okay, I have one of these Gucci Glow and Care Shine lipsticks. I have one. It's a really nice formula. This one here is just so stunning. Oh, this one is called They Met in Argentina and it's a warm rosewood with neutral tones with a little bit of pink and coral. Oh. Okay, the only worry I, I have is the minute pink and coral kind of get put together, is it pink? Is it coral? Okay, maybe it's both, but is it at all peach? <laughs> I don't look good in lipsticks or lip colors that have kind of like a peachy undertone. It's better for me if they're a little orangey like coral or a little more pink. But the minute it all leans at all peach, that, that worries me. And I feel like this would be one of those lipsticks that if I were to spend the $42 on it, I wouldn't pick it up unless I was able to go in store and decide if the color was gonna work for me. Because just buying it blind based on like marketing photos, that makes me uncomfortable at this price point, but she's stunning. Like this packaging is so gorgeous for the lipstick, for the eyeshadow, but I can't buy products based on packaging alone. Woo, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, I don't know if you remember, who was it? Was it Uma Beauty who had a new matte powder that they were launching and it had this, what to me looked like a completely revolutionary packaging. So the package looked similar to this. This is your regular powder packaging that has a lid and all the powder is at the bottom and it comes out through the sifter. But Uma Beauty came up with this really neat design. And I don't know if they designed it or they were the first ones to use the packaging to launch a product with this packaging, but all the product is in a rim around the edge. So it's like a little donut. There's a hole in the middle here and there is this ridge and all of the powder is in there. And all you have to do is turn it and the powder falls straight to the bottom. And that to me is like such a packaging win because I cannot tell you how many times this right here has happened. And this is me not covering up the sifter cover. This has a sifter cover and I've been a bad girl and I didn't close it. And now it's like poof, powder everywhere. But my favorite thing about this packaging is that you twist it and a little bit falls into the bottom. You can swirl it, put it on, and that's it. And the next time you need more, you twist a little bit more. Okay, so this packaging, I almost bought the one from Uma Beauty just because of the packaging design, but I talked myself out of it because I was like, look, matte powder on your 47, almost 48 year old skin really doesn't look that good. <laughs> you need way too much setting spray to make your face come back to life. And then halfway through the day, you start looking like the Crypt Keeper again. Do not buy any more matte powders. But Makeup Forever has a new powder. It's their HD Skin Twist and Light Lighting Powder. And they don't just have one shade, they have three shades all in this packaging. It looks so interesting. <gasps> uh, all right, so it unifies, corrects, revitalizes your complexion for 24 hours of blurring radiance. It's a loose powder that comes in four different harmonies. Oh, I, lo I love the way that that sounds. So if I were to get one, I'd get the lightest one, the one that's kind of like pale pink, kind of like real pale blue, and that flesh toned one, but mm, I don't know. And I, okay, okay. The reason I'm excited about this is because it actually talks about being radiant. I don't think that the Uma Beauty powder would work for me because it's matte, but this one is talking about being radiant and the package, I don't know, I don't know, talk me out of it. Talk me out of it because I'm at the point where like, buy it now. I don't even know that it's available. Um, this was like a week ago that this was posted, but I'm, I'm gonna keep a little eye out for this because this definitely has my attention. There is a new product from NYX. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that this is the sort of product I would normally go for, because <laughs> it's not. But it caught my attention because the of the description. It's their Smooth Whip Blurring Matte Lip Cream. All right, you know me, I am not a liquid lipstick fan. I never have been. Those traditional liquid lipsticks that you can put on, dry down, don't budge, those are the ones that turn my lips into a desert. Those are the ones that flake and crumble off my lips. I don't know whether it's I'm applying an inordinate amount or whether I just don't know what I'm doing. I don't know, but they never look good on me and they don't last. And when they come off, my lips are absolutely tortured. So this says that it's supposed to blur your lips while nourishing them for all day wear that will not crack. 
those are the problems I had. It was cracking, it was drying, and it made my lips look like dry and flaky. It didn't make my lips look pretty. The color stayed until it flaked off, but then it, mm, it was not attractive. So this idea of being blurring and nourishing all day wear, it's only $8. I'm so curious. I'm so curious. Now, I need another lip product in my life, like I need another hole in my head, but this looks really interesting. I wish the colors were a t just a little bit more exciting because you've got your basic, you know, deep berries, your kind of plum tones, a red, and then you have some nudes. I don't, I don't know. I, I would like a few more unique colors and I'm not talking like greens and grays and blacks. I'm, I'm talking like nuanced colors that not everybody has and you're putting out the same color but just in a new formula. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Let me know. I could see myself skipping this but I'm kind of curious as well. House Labs has a new foundation they're going to be launching and I'm kind of excited about it. It's called their Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. It's $45. They have 50 shades. I love that so many companies are launching a wide range of shades when it comes to like skin products. The years of having like, you know, 12 shades or 16 shades, it's shameful if you do that now. I mean, the fact that House Labs is coming out 50 shades, I think that's fantastic. And I love that it's not like, you know, 47 shades of beige and three deep shades. I am really curious to try this. I haven't really been pulled in by anything that House Labs has launched. Well, mm, I've been curious. And maybe this is a brand that, since they did their relaunch at Sephora, I wasn't interested in anything that was coming from the brand when they were available on Amazon or straight from um, their own website. But the minute they relaunched, I feel like they caught my eye in a different way. Their bronzers and their highlights look really interesting. They have some lip products that look intriguing, but this might be the first thing that really kind of pushes me over the line to try something from this brand. All right, I saw this and I stopped. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and it kind of made me go, uh -huh. let me tell you about it. There is a new collab between Winky Lux and Applebee's. And this is their Bold High Shine Lip Gloss that's inspired by Applebee's Wing Sauces. It's called their Saucy Gloss. <laughs> okay, now I know, I, I know that there's no chicken in these lip glosses, but all I can think of is like, is it gonna taste like chicken? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what my problem is, but I saw this and because the promo photo is of these tubes of lip gloss sitting on top of a super sauce chicken wing, it just kind of oh, made me uncomfortable. I don't know, the colors look pretty. Like if I cover up, if I'm looking at my phone here and I cover up the one where they're perched on top of a food item and all I see is the gold and kind of like this fiery pepper shade and those deeper shades, it looks really, really fun. But then in the middle, how are they gonna do this? They just drop pictures of the chicken wings and sauce. There's no lip gloss involved in this. And I'm just like, uh, I don't know, I don't know. My immediate emotional response was, ew. <laughs> and I'm sure the glosses are fine. And I love me a good chicken wing, like, oh, so much. But I don't think this is for Here's another food themed lip product that does not give me the heebie jeebies. This is new from Beauty Bakery. They have their Waffle Things matte lipstick. Okay, and maybe it's the difference between a meat item <laughs> and a waffle. I don't know, I love me a car, but these, the waffles are pink in this picture. They don't even look real. These look kind of intriguing. I was just at Ulta today and I don't think I saw these. I kind of walked quickly through the whole store and I don't remember seeing these, so maybe these haven't made it to my local Ulta yet. My local Ulta does carry Beauty Bakery in store, but I don't think I saw these. These are really interesting. There are 10 shades and they're $22 a piece. I don't think I've tried other than this, this flower power, what is it? They're Better Not Bitter Beauty Bakery Flower Powder. I've not tried anything else from the brand. There's nine photos. That middle row kind of catches me, those two reds, of course, and the neutral on the end. Um, the Waffle Pops is kind of like the more vibrant red. 
the chick and waffle is the one in the middle and the waffle taco is the one on the end. I could definitely see myself wearing all of those from the middle row. Now I wouldn't get all three. I think I would go in, swatch, discover which one's for me, but this sounds kind of interesting. But I want something that's easy to apply, it's not gonna tug, it's not gonna be dry, it's not gonna make my lips flake and feel uncomfortable. If I have a nice textural feeling and it wears and it applies easily, that's pretty much all I need from a lipstick. So I don't know, this one's kind of intriguing. Now you know I love M Cosmetics. I've forever been a fan of the brand um, and they have a new product out. This is their Everglass Lip Dew. Okay, there are six shades and look what just came in the mail today. I Mine just came, I haven't actually tried it yet. This is the shade Enchant. I got the kind of nudist shade. So this is what it looks like already bought it you know a little window in the back to show you what it looks like here's the doe foot i definitely wanted to try this oh i don't know that i like this color though i mean it, it'll work my goal was to find something that wasn't too dark and here it is this this kind of reminds me of kind of like a butterscotch or a peanut butter shade and i generally like things that have just a hint of pink to them because this color here does not look like what Enchant looks like in their promo photo. It looks a little bit more neutral and not quite as warm as this. All right, but this is supposed to be a glass-like shine, a weightless gloss serum gel hybrid with the luxurious comfort of a balm. Like it was checking off all the boxes with the description. I haven't tried it yet, more than just on the back of my hand, we'll have to see, but it has jojoba oil, rosehip seed oil, and it's supposed to be ultra smooth and never sticky to wear, 22 bucks. So already got it. This kind of caught my attention. There is a new brow product from Benefit. It is their Volumizing Fiber Eyebrow Pencil. I love a gel that has fibers in it, so a tinted fiber gel is my one of my favorite ways to give a little bit more boost and heft to my own eyebrows because the fibers in there kind of lay down and can mimic the look of extra hairs that I don't have. So this is interesting. It has fibers and powder that attach to your existing hairs to build depth, dimension, and create lightweight volume. It's gonna give you a fuller looking brow that's gonna look natural. And it's formulated with silk cotton tree fibers that adhere to skin and hair to volumize, fill, and define. And guess what? They say it's waterproof. So it's $24 for the pencil, $14 if you get the mini. I think the interesting part of this product is that it has fibers in a pencil. I don't, I don't know. I'm always looking for an interesting brow product and I can't think of another single pencil that has fibers in the formulation. And this is not just fibers, but fibers and powder. I love a powdery pencil. My favorite used to be the one from Lancome. Oh, I forget what it was called, but it was a powder pencil. It was fabulous and they reformulated it and they ruined it. <laughs> but the idea of powder and fibers in a pencil, I don't know. It It's very intriguing. I'm very curious. I kind of, oh, I kind of want to know what it's like. What are your thoughts? Let me know. Oh my goodness, this looks so beautiful. Rose Ink has new shades of their Blush Divine Clean and Dewy Cream Blush. It's $30 now. I have one of their cream blushes in the shade Azalea and I love it. I picked it up in a set during the Sephora sale this spring. It has been a really welcomed addition to my cheek collection. I really, really think it's beautiful. It wears well. It's comfortable. Um, it has a little bit of glow to it. It's not, it's not shiny. It's not glossy, but it does give kind of like a skin-like glow to the cheek. So I don't always feel like I have to wear highlight. It's so pretty and they have three new shades. Um, one is a mauve, one is a muted peach, and one is a rich taupe. And that rich taupe shade, if it's the one that's closest to the highlights, that looks so pretty. Now, they are also showing images here of their new highlights, and I feel like those are really interesting. I, I saw a review from Hannah Louise posting, because I was so close to snatching up their new bronzer and their new highlight, and I watched her review it, and I was like, oh, maybe I dodged a bullet. <laughs> I feel like the bronzer in the lightest shade would be way too yellowy orange for me, but these highlights, she says, are... Um, beautiful in natural light when the light hits them they have this gorgeous 
glassy shine and I was like yes 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 she says but unless you're in natural light it's like almost you're not wearing any and I was like no I spend all day indoors with the blinds drawn <laughs> I want something that you're gonna see whether I have natural light or not um, but I don't know that blush in the muted taupe that looks fantastic <gasps> Oh, okay. YSL has a new lipstick. It's the Bold High Pigment Lipstick. Oh, oh, okay, Bold, High Pigment, all of those. And then you add lipstick on the end, boom, sold. I don't know that I, I need to instantly go out and purchase this. There are 12 shades, it's $39. So it's not as expensive as the Gucci, but it's an ultra pigmented satin lipstick with buildable shine finish. What does that mean? Because if it's ultra pigmented, you're going to get full pigment on initial swipe. But how do you get buildable shine? Is it less shiny and the more times you swipe it, the more shine you get? I don't know. Because the images look super shiny. Now I'm really curious. Ooh. All right. So it has um, red floral and grape oil to help your lips feel comfortable and moisturized for up to 10 hours. And it's more reflective than a classic satin but more subtle than a high shine lip gloss. So it's not quite gloss level of shiny, but it's more than a satin lipstick. This is really interesting. Actually, some of those images look actually like gloss level of shine. This is intriguing, $39. Mm, okay, it's, it's calling my name, it's calling my name. There are some new shades of Tower 28 products. I love their lip gloss. The only problem I have is since they are a clean at Sephora brand, if you don't use a lip gloss steadily and like power through it, it can go bad quickly. I had one for like about seven months and it went from like being fabulous and wonderful and amazing and then it started smelling off. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. Um, but they have new shades of products I really like. I did like their Shine On Jelly Lip Gloss. It's $15. Their new shade is called Sesame. And then in that kind of mauve shade, they have a sun-kissed mauve blush called Office Hours. I tried one of their blushes, but the shade that I got was a little too terracotta. It was a little too deep for my skin tone. But I really wanted to try another one and I just haven't gone back to get it. I don't know. These are so pretty. I'm probably, probably going to say I'm not going to get them. But they really made me stop. As I was scrolling, I was like, ooh, hmm, hello. I just had another emotional response to a beauty product. <laughs> All right. So there are some Laura Geller products that I actually really enjoy. I love the Bake Balance and Brighten. It's one of the things that I use on days that I'm going to work. So if I take my mask off at lunchtime and I need coverage on my nose, I use that just to kind of touch up my nose or other places like the end of my chin here where sometimes in a mask all day at the dentist office, I lose coverage. So I have a special place in my heart for Laura Geller products. There is a new serum blush cheek tint. And um, I have thoughts. Okay, and for me, I don't know if it's the product but the packaging looks like it would drive me crazy. Like, remember the Makeup Forever and the Uma Beauty Powder packaging? It was like, oh, that looks so cool. This is the one that makes you go, I'm bitter. <laughs> okay, I have never loved products that come with a cushion applicator. I know Charlotte Tilbury has a concealer with a cushion applicator, the magic one. Hate that. Um, I don't really love the applicator on the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind, another cushion applicator. I really hate with my full heart like a hundred percent hate the packaging on the charlotte tilbury highlighting wand and the contour wand those squeezy tubes with a little oh they just get all gross and disgusting on the inside you put the cap on and product kind of goes everywhere it's the one thing that bothers me so much i want my products you know i'm going to use them carefully and when i close them i want the package to maintain the integrity of the product but the minute the product is so kind of full in the sponge and as you're putting it back the cap back on product starts to ooze out i hate it then it looks gross then it looks messy then it looks like i don't care and i care a lot so the minute i saw this packaging i was like oh no laura geller so it's basically like a little stick with a cushion on the end and what's interesting is it says remove 
to, is it remove to wash? Remove to clean. You can actually take the sponge off and clean it, which I think is good. But as I was looking at this, I was like, well, what colors are there? I was scrolling and then I saw this picture. And this is my nightmare. This is my packaging nightmare. That, that these products or any product that is liquid that comes with a cushion applicator would end up looking like this, like it exploded. Uh, I saw that I was like, absolutely not. Ooh, what a violent emotional response to a makeup item. Ugh. I don't know that these colors are actually the colors. I would probably wear more of that poppy peach shade, the more peachy toned one, and the practical pink it's a little too cool. It's a little too white based. I don't know that it would look that lovely on me, but just for the fact that there's only two shades, but the packaging alone is a dead no. Oh my goodness, Dior has a new lipstick. It's their Forever Transfer Proof Lipstick. Hello. It's a transfer proof lipstick with 16 hours of wear, lightweight, ultra pigmented, and it's matte. Hydrating, long wearing, transfer proof. Okay, so they're saying all the things that are exciting to me. Hydrating, matte, like those don't always go hand in hand. That looks really exciting. And the fact that it's transfer proof, like I'm in a mask all day at work. And how great would it be to put on a lipstick to know that it's not gonna dry my lips out and when I take my mask off, I'm not gonna have clown mouth. This is, this is kind of exciting. So it has red peony extract and jojoba for hydration. And uh, I, mm, this is kind of, this is more exciting than the Gucci lipstick, even maybe a little bit more exciting than the YSL. I don't know, I don't know, there's only 12 shades. And as I'm looking at the shades that there are, they're your real definite Dior like reds. There is a really deep vampy shade. There is one kind of mid neutral shade. There's only eight of the 12 shown here in the swatches on the model's arms but I am super intrigued by this. Oh, I don't know, it's already available. Hmm. This is one of those because it's $42. I would feel most comfortable going to Sephora, swatching and deciding which color I wanted. Because if I just bought one based on promo photos or on swatch photos on like the model's arms, I don't know that I would end up with a shade that would actually flatter me. And at $42, like my favorite lipstick is from Lisa Eldridge. Those are 36. And I already feel like I am overindulging. Every time I buy one, I would have a hard time spending $42 and not getting a shade I could wear with anything whenever my heart desired. And I think that might be the one thing. Is there a perfect shade for me? I'm kind of looking at the shades here. Um, they're, they're lovely, but I don't know that I'd want to wear shades this bold daily under my mask at work. Because <laughs> like, there's a ton of reds, there's some berries, there's a really deep vampy color, and one kind of terracotta-y nude shade. There's kind of like a corally orange shade, but they're all kind of bright, aren't they? I don't know. And for me, the, the, the allure of this, you know, budge proof, transfer proof is the fact that I'm in a mask all day at the dentist office. I don't know. I don't know if you didn't know I'm a dental assistant, but this, this looks really interesting to me. I don't know. We'll see. But the lipsticks are calling me. They are calling my name for sure, for sure. Okay, I've seen people reviewing this and I I hadn't been on Instagram enough to really read about it. So this is my first time kind of seeing what it is. But Lancome has a new foundation. Have you heard about this? Have you tried it? It's the new Tante Edel Ultra Wear Care and Glow Foundation with hyaluronic acid. Okay, now the two things that I have always loved from Lancome I've always loved a Lancome mascara. I feel like so many of them are just really fantastic. And I've always loved foundations from Lancome. My favorite one um, used to be the Genifique, no, the Photogenique, the Photogenique. That one was amazing. They don't make it anymore. It's been a long time since they've made it. Um, I think I bought my last bottle of it like seven or eight years ago. And then right as I was running out, they quit making it and my shade was one of the first ones to go. Oh, it was so sad. 
And so I have tried a lot of their foundations. I think they're really, really beautiful. But this one's interesting. It's supposed to be a healthy looking glow serum foundation with buildable medium coverage. Um, it has SPF 27. Never expect your foundation to give you the SPF coverage you need. We're a dedicated SPF. It has hyaluron hyaluronic acid, mandelic acid, and it gives you a natural looking glow. It's 30 transfer resistant blendable shades, four radiant finishes, and 26 natural finishes. Does that mean there are four shades that are a little glowier and 26 that are not quite so glowy? Interesting, it's $47. Okay, I have, and I wonder if this is the foundation that is replacing, let me see if I can find it. I wonder if it's replacing the Tante Maracal. I like this foundation. I think this is a beautiful foundation. Um, I used to have the Ultra Wear one, the one that was matte, but the older I get, I had to declutter because I just don't look good in a flat matte kind of drier form. It doesn't budge, it's beautiful, it's a great wear, but my skin, the older I get, I can't wear a foundation like that. And this is a really beautiful foundation, but I wonder if they're discontinuing this Tante Maracal and they're going with this new one, this Ultra Wear Care and Glow Foundation. Okay, let me know what your thoughts are on new foundations and are you interested in finding out if this new Lancome one is good for mature skin? Because I'm, I'm kind of curious, I really want to know. The hard thing would be trying to find a match because this is not the number system that I'm used to seeing from Lancome from when I bought this. This is shade 100. Ivoire N, so it's a neutral ivory shade. And the first shade they have here is 105W. <laughs> the first neutral they have is a 120. And I, 120 has always been too dark for me in Lancome. I don't know, I don't know. I'd have to go and get matched, but this is kind of intriguing. Let me know your thoughts. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, and there is this one like entry that says sneak peek. And it's talking about Charlotte Tilbury's new kissing lipstick. And I was like, who cares about the lipstick? Are those concealer tubes I see off to the side? I would love for there to be a new Charlotte Tilbury concealer. Like that beautiful skin foundation that launched earlier this year. Mm. Chef's Kiss love so much. I would love for there to be a, an accompanying concealer just a touch more coverage, but with a similar formula because that stuff is gorgeous. I love so much. That would be fantastic. Of course, there's the new lipstick and it looks like, is that a, it looks like it might actually be a face palette. Interesting. Okay, but instantly my eye went straight for the concealer. <laughs> I've tried the other two concealers from Charlotte, the one that comes like in the little clicky pen. It's not a clicky pen, it's a twist up pen. And then the Magic Away Concealer, whatever it's called, the Magic Concealer, not the corrector, but the one that has the sponge tip on it, which I don't like. Um, I would definitely like something with a doe foot. That's my preferred method for putting on concealer more than like a brush tip um, and more than that sponge tip, but I don't know, I'd be intrigued. Okay, I might just stop right here with this last thing. It's another lip product. I know, do I live up to my YouTube name of the lipstick gal or what? I love lip products. And this is a, a new release from a brand, I don't know how new it is. They, they've been talking about this since the end of June, beginning of July. Maybe I've just been like focused on Lisa Eldridge and Sydney Grace. And now that I'm taking the blinders off and like seeing what else there is, I'm like, ooh, Rare Beauty has a new launch of lip products. You might've already tried them. You might've seen other people reviewing them. These look really intriguing to me. These are the kind word lip products. They have lip liners, they have lipsticks. Oh my goodness. I love it. The lipsticks are only $20. Buttery, pigment rich, soft matte lipsticks that hug lips in pure comfort all day. Sold. Yeah, I want one. I want one, maybe more than one. And then their matte lip liners is a creamy waterproof liner that glides on like a balm to define and shape the lips with stay put color. And it comes with a built in sharpener. And they have 10 shades to match their 10 lipsticks. Love all of that and the price so for the price of well less than the ysl lipstick which is 39 dollars, you can get a liner and a lipstick i don't know and these colors look so pretty they look so gorgeous and so wearable 
And, and I have heard other people talking about how these lipsticks are super comfortable, how it's like a gorgeous, gorgeous formula. I don't know, what, maybe these more than the others, but all of the lip products are calling my name. I don't know, have you tried these? What are your thoughts? I'll just tell you, I feel like Rare Beauty is the next brand I kind of want to try more from. I have their lip souffles. I have two of those. I really like those. And I have one of the liquid blushes. I really love that. And I feel like there's a lot of other products that I really want to try, but I just need to jump, you know, like feet first straight into Rare Beauty and maybe do a whole face. Would that be interesting to you? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching today. I want to know, are any of these like calling your name? Do any of these kind of instantly make you excited or giddy? Are there other launches that I didn't talk about that you're like, you need to think about this. This looks amazing. Let me know in the comment section down below. Or if you're able to just kind of resist it all and let it be, let me know how you do that. That would be fantastic. I, Cause I know I can't buy all the lip products that are calling my name. I just, I can't. I already bought eight lipsticks in the last month. I feel like I've already over purchased, but Okay, thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and I will see you again soon. Bye.